Please welcome to the stage His Excellency Ivan Duque Marquez, former President of Colombia. Good morning. It's a great honor for me to be back in Concordia. I want to express my gratitude to, to Matt Swift, to Nicolas Logothetis, and also to my good friend, George Logothetis. I also want to welcome the presence of President Lacalle, President Uribe, and many leaders this morning. I'm here today because I want to make a reflection about why the Amazon must save the world. And I want to begin by sharing with you this image. We are facing today a climate crisis, which is the most challenging crisis of our lifetime. We are seeing how the temperature in the world is racing and is generating all sorts of effects, but maybe one has to be thought, and it is that we're seeing natural disasters happen in a more frequency than ever. We're seeing that hurricanes category five are happening like no other time before. We're seeing that the rays in temperatures are expanding transmittable diseases in different countries. We're seeing the meltdown of snowy mountains that are the source of fresh water in different countries, like mine, Colombia. And we're seeing how all this damage is also generating a massive situation in which every year we're seeing 551 billion tons of greenhouse gases that are emitted into the atmosphere. And this has to be stopped. This is no theory. It is practical and it is critical to learn that if we don't stop the temperature by that additional 1.5 degrees, we're going to be suffering the worst situation in our history. And a lot of people are going to die and many countries are going to suffer the rise of the sea levels, and maybe some countries will disappear. But what is more threatening is that if we don't do anything and we let things as they are, this is going to become the biggest negative heritage from a generation to another. And that's why we have made a lot of commitments at the policy level, at the government level, we were in Glasgow one year ago, and we were basically saying that we want to see a reduction in the greenhouse emissions by 51% in the case of Colombia by the year 2030. And many countries said they want to be carbon neutral by 2050. And we have seen bills approved in Congress. We have seen companies that have devoted a lot of effort to become carbon neutral. We have seen a voluntary market of carbon credits that is evolving in the world, but still we haven't seen the major emitters of CO2 and greenhouse gases do what they should do. And there's something even more complex. We haven't got into another conversation, which is as important as to be carbon neutral is to be nature positive which means how are we going to protect our ecosystems? How big is going to be the area protected country by country? How is it that we're going to ensure that the major goal of the High Ambition Coalition, which is to have 30% of protected areas in our countries by 2030, is met even before, as Colombia did it this year? So we have to start with a more complex conversation which is the area of the world that represents the most valuable lung of our planet? And how is it that we're going to protect it? 
And that's why the conversation about the Amazon is not just for us to recognize that, yes, the Amazon is important because it's green, or it's important because we have heard through the decades that it is a long over planet. The name Amazon came from Francisco Orellana, where he was attacked by women warriors in the Amazonic region. And he said, those warriors are similar to the mytholo Greek mythology figure of the Amazon warriors. So he appointed and he named that region the Amazon. And we tend to look at the Amazon as a very interesting place, but maybe we don't know the magnitude of the Amazon. And the Amazon today, the bioma amazonico, it's bigger than the United States area without Alaska. Or it's twice, twice the size of all the 27 countries of the European Union together, as you can also see in this figure. And this region of the world also has a population of 30 million people. People that interact, that live, that consume, that have life expectations, that want to earn a living. Populations that can be as big as the whole country of Peru, or that can be bigger than three of the largest capitals in Europe. So that presence of population in such a tremendously big territory, it's crucial for the world, especially because as you will see, rephrasing this movie one hour photo, in just one hour, the Amazon discharges the same amount of fresh water that is consumed by 8,000 million people in one year. It discharges 209,000 cubic meters per second. And it is a source not only of rainfall and water for areas that can represent 70% of the GDP of South America, but also it participates in the environmental life cycle in the whole Western Hemisphere. And it's also the home of 30% of all the species in the planet. Every three days, a new species is discovered in the Amazon. So this place represents a treasure where the value of its natural resources, environmental resources, can be as big as the reserves that countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran have accumulated over time. But what is hurtful, and you can see it in this image, is that since 1970 until today, we have lost because of deforestation, a territory that can be as big as the state of Texas and California together, or as big as Germany and France together. We are losing every year substantial parts of the Amazon. And if this pattern continues, it's going to be more difficult the way how we deal with the climate crisis we face. And it's going to be more complicated because there will be a point where the damage in the Amazon will be irreversible. So we think about the value uh, of those natural resources measured by the amount of oxygen that is created and by how the Amazon captures CO2 emissions for the world, we have to act with determination. We need to act boldly. 
We need to act in a Concordia way, which means bring together the private sector, the public sector, communities, and bring together all a set of actors in order to prevent further deterioration, to recover the land that has been lost, and to put an end to circumstances not only as deforestation, but illegal mining, or the deforestation that comes with illegal crops, or even the destruction of the species that are unique for research. And that's why we're here today. Because in this Concordia Summit, in the 12th Concordia Summit, we are launching an initiative, the Concordia Amazon Initiative. An initiative where the private sector, the public sector, NGOs, indigenous communities will work together in very clear and specific ways. Three years ago, in Leticia, when I was president of Colombia, I chaired the Leticia Pact Summit. And we got the president of Brazil, the president of Bolivia, the president of Peru, the president of Ecuador, the prime ministers and presidents of Guyana and Suriname, to agree that we all can use our presidential power to coordinate the right policies. So the political will was there. The agreement is there. But what is pending is that at the local level and the technocratic level, we can do much more between the public and the private sector. So the initiative that we're launching today is making a call. First of advocacy. We cannot protect what we don't know. So we need to create the right awareness that protecting the Amazon is as important in terms of being a nature-positive planet as it is to be carbon neutral by 2050. But this does not happen overnight. The first element that we have to build is the concept of circular economies. Put an end to illegal wood production. Put an end to illegal livestock and cattle production. Be able to create aggregated value chains with Amazonic fruits like Camu Camu, Acai, Sacha Inchi, among many others, and be able to connect those products in the production line with the indigenous communities and get buyers in the rest of the world. So they won't, there won't be a negative incentive of destroying the Amazon. Because once you create that aggregated value chain, you're also protecting that region of the world from further destruction, but at the same time, you're creating oxygen. And while creating oxygen, you're also reducing the CO2 emissions. Plus, we will be able to bring to the region another concept, which is that if we do the right thing, we're going to be able to get the conservation, the production of oxygen, and the retention of greenhouse emissions to participate actively in the voluntary carbon credit market. By monetizing those credits, we will be able to provide resources to the indigenous communities and the local communities that will get a real and better share out of conservation instead of destruction, as we have seen for so many decades. And this is possible with the concept of green finance. Because when we get the countries to commit and the private sector to commit, we'll be able to issue green bonds. We'll be issue, we will be able to present green taxonomies for the Amazonic regions in all the member countries of the Leticia Pact. And we will be able to see companies not only buying credits, but issuing bonds related to their ESG work for the Amazon. And that is a game changer. We'll also be able 
to seal areas that are declared protected areas. And by sealing, we're going to be able to use technology in favor of protecting this important lung for the world. And that implies one concept that is part of this Concordia Amazon initiative, SUS technability. How technology supports the concept of sustainability to AI, IoT, cloud computing, satellites, drones, so that we can capture and determine if a protected area is sealed, and if it's sealed, we can be able to tokenize those areas depending on the amount of emissions that are captured, and by that, we are going to be able to create a conservation economy that brings benefits to communities. And this is possible today with the technologies that are available. If we get on not only the technology companies to support the way we monitor, but also the way we verify, and the way we make traceable the carbon credits, the carbon bonds, the taxonomies that apply locally, this is going to be the better use of AI to save the planet. And we also need to have a new corporate vision. We launched in Colombia the concept of the benefit corporations, the B Corps. And we have surpassed the 1,400 companies that are registered in just a country like Colombia. But imagine what would happen if we massively think of companies and startups that do well and do good in this region and that the companies that are members of Concordia can become buyers of their products or engage them in sustainable value chains. That would also make a major difference in a region that requires this new modern entrepreneurship. And we can also use technology to put an end to this horrible crime of illegal mining. Sometimes I just don't understand why we get to see 50 ton yellow machinery in the middle of the jungle. How did they get there? Obviously not telepresence. Who installed them? Not the local mechanic. Where do they get the parts? How do they get it fixed? So I strictly believe that with companies that have ethics, that are yellow machinery producers that are also part of this summit, we can use technology to identify where in the world are those machineries that are being used today to destroy this important lung for the planet. That we can geo-reference where they are. That we can trace who bought them in the secondary market and be able to use this technology to put an end to one of the most horrible ecocides in the planet. We can certainly also, out of this initiative, be able to call scientists, because 70% of the species and the flora in the Amazon can be used for the concept of cosmetic, but at the same time, medicine production. Imagine if we get communities to participate in such an effort and if we can get local partners and local startups to be part of this. We will be protecting, but at the same time we will be creating an ethical way of living to many workers. And this takes me to the importance of this initiative. We are creating with Concordia for next year a summit in the territory, in the Amazonic territory, where we're going to bring scientists, businessmen, policy leaders, heads of state, and make a declaration for the short, medium, and long term in which we are going to define specific goals to protect the Amazon. It is the most important thing that we can do to be a nature-positive planet. And especially, we're going to be able to demonstrate that with every action, we're going to be able to consolidate the accomplishment 
of the sustainable development goals in the Amazonic territory. The cost of not doing anything is too high. But also, if we do this the right way, we will be giving hope to the world. There's no way that we are going to solve the climate crisis we face without looking, acting, protecting, defending, and promoting the Amazon. I am glad to chair this initiative, to work hand in hand with Matt Swift, Nick Logotetis, George Logotetis, but all of you, because the definition of Concordia is when we can shake hands for a common purpose and a common good. The Amazon can be protected. The Amazon can effectively become the most important policy attention place in the world for nature positive results. And I am convinced that if we do the right thing in the Amazon, the Amazon can save the world. Thank you so much. Thank you.